Hey guys, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. And today I've got our washing machine set up in the bathroom on a stand. And then Melanie is going to be able to put her washing uh, detergent underneath and it's baby cat approved. The washing machine now sits at the height of the bathtub. And then the drain hose goes on into the bathtub here. And when we're done... We just bring it up and put the drain hose clip back on. I've got it too close to the wall for my own hands. There. And when we want to do a laundry, we drop that hose down in the shower and do laundry. This is where it's going to live. That is really nice. I want to close that in with paneling and put a door, maybe a double door in the front so she can get in and out of there neatly so it looks nice. But right now she wanted to do her laundry and I said, please wait a minute. Let me get that set up for you so we can have showers and do our laundry and not worry about putting it back and forth all the time. So there is another step forward in the off-grid homestead. In the tiny house, the off-grid tiny house. Getting better and better every day. Hey guys. Whoa. Oh, it's bad out there. I don't know if that shows. Mm. Probably don't see the snow blowing. It's blasting through the property. Just started a little bit ago. Um, we've had, well, I should say it's been snowing all day, but it's been, um, ooh, my rack is flexing in a bad way. That makes me nervous. Oh, I'm going to keep an eye on my solar panel rack. I think I might put some more screws on that because that wind is wicked today. That is flexing bad. So so yeah, while I'm standing here, I think I might keep an eye on that. I just saw that flex bad. Now it's not going to move while I'm looking. Anyway, um, it's really, really, really cold. It's going to drop down to probably one degree tonight, Fahrenheit. It is currently below freezing, and we've had snow all day, pretty much just slushy snow all day, but it's uh, supposed to give us up to eight inches, so we'll see how it goes. It's, I think, 2.30 or 3 in the afternoon. I've been working in the wood shop, and uh, I showed you the end result of my crafts, and I was working on the computer up uh, here and there, and planning my projects for the off-grid uh, tiny house. Now that I have my plans established, we'll get to that in a little while. Right now, I'm working on my Bedini coil winding jig. Now, this is on my main channel because it's what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to put this together. I started it one day, and I was going to finish it up, but I never got to it because of being on the road so much the last few days. So I'm going to finish this right now and uh, show you as I build it on video. And, I don't know, there might be some other people that want to build a coil winding jig, so you never know. What I did so far is I put two uprights, and I put a, a shaft in here that simply holds two spools of wire so that when I build the winding crank handle, uh, the, the winder here, then I can clamp this down to a table, I can wind the spool that I'm going to put the two strands of wire onto, and in this way I can, I can spin a Bedini coil, I can spin one or two wires at a time onto a single coil, and then count how many times I go around. So you'll see it when I'm done what I'm talking about. Well there guys, I just threw it together, it was no big deal. I put a hole through a board here, and put a bolt in it, and I pulled a, a hole through this part to make the main shaft. I had a long bolt and a bunch of nuts, nuts and washers, and now I have a spinning handle here. It's very simple. I just drilled a bunch of holes. I just popped this together real fast. Well, I don't even think it was worth recording. But uh, you can see I just put two stand-ups here with holes in it, and a rod goes through. All right, It's a little bit stiff, but it works. I can put my two coils of wire on here, and then I bought two stand-ups with holes through them to fit this bolt. And the bolt is just, uh, I can undo the, the nuts and slide this all apart. So if I undo this outer nut here and slide this all apart, I can pull the, the, uh, this one right out, alright? And uh, when I'm done winding the coil anyway. So I don't have it perfectly straight, but I'm not sure that's really going to matter because I'm just going to feed this like a fishing line with my finger with one hand while I'm cranking with the other and wind that coil up. So the important thing is to get uh, a pretty decent coil so I'm going to string it along 
I'm going to take my time. They say you don't have to just as long as you fill the spool properly. But I'm going to take my time and try to do a good job. Anyway, um, so there's a coil winding jig if anybody's interested. And uh, from the electronics channel, I hope this helps somebody. It's very, very simple. And you'll see that when I wind the coil later on today. Hey guys, it is cold, s below 16 degrees, but a 71 and a half in the tiny house. Very nice and comfy cozy considering how very cold it is outside. So the uh, wood fired furnace is doing a very nice job at keeping us warm in here with a bitter cold out there. It's going to be sunny tomorrow, but it's not going to be above 24 degrees. And it is... where is their matchbox in my way? Oh, it's not even 9 o'clock at night. It's supposed to hit 11 tonight, so it's going to be really cold. Um, I did a lot of work in the wood shop. I only gave you some summaries, but um, my, my camera was too cold. Anyway, here we are. Good morning, everybody. Two degrees. It is 7.30 in the morning, 2 degrees, but uh, the morning temperature is not too bad after leaving the stove overnight. The biggest window in the house happens to be the worst window in the house, <laughs> and that's ice. <laughs> that's the big window. Not good. But at least it's not cold in here. That's just not good to have all that constant condensation on a wood window frame. 